Welcome back Nuggets to another Junk World devlog. A few weeks ago I started working on my 3D action puzzle platformer and up until now I've been mainly working on the platforming part. And with the help of all of you testing and giving feedback on my early prototypes I got the movement to the point where it's almost feeling right. It took a few weeks but it has been well worth it. And now the character controller is almost finished. I finally have time to start working on something else. Right? Hello? This whole project started because I wanted to learn how to program, which implies that I do not know how to program. And so when I made my character controller, I wrecked up this huge amount of technical debt. Huh. Technical debt. The implied cost of additional rework for choosing an easy solution right now, instead of a better approach which would take longer. Remember when I said this in a previous devlog? In the end, I made it work by adding another state for Carly to be in next to walking and running. Some of you familiar with programming might assume that by me saying that, that would mean that I would be using some form of state machine. A state machine is a programming pattern in which an object is defined to have a set amount of states, such as walking, running, swimming, each state only containing logic specific to that state and thus keeping your overall code base clear and uncluttered and making it really easy to add additional functionality. Which would be a very, very good solution for a character controller. However, I really, really wanted to work on other things, but when I started typing things like this, I knew I was in deep, deep trouble. And so I did what every respectable game developer would do. I started a new project. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. But if you would please indulge me and take a look at these two clips and tell me what the difference is between them. That's right, they almost look exactly the same. So much so that it can make a cut right here and you won't even notice. Oh, there's a cut there. Just scroll back and try and find it. However, one uses my old character controller and the other uses my brand new state machine character controller. It took me a good three nights to take my existing character controller and rework it to a state machine. And that is something that every game dev has to deal with from time to time, putting in a lot of work and effort for seemingly no result. But it's only seemingly, because in all honesty, reworking my character controller to a state machine has been the best decision ever. I learned a ton of new things and implementing new features and new stuff is an absolute breeze. And if you are wondering how a state machine exactly works and how you would go about implementing one into your own game, I've put some links in the description below to help you get started. With the technical side of my main character finished, I could finally start working on other things. Before I could go on, I really wanted to fix my character rig. I had been having some trouble with spontaneously rotating limbs, which prevented me from rotating Carly to do a flip or something like that. So I rolled up my sleeves and searched the internet, but I couldn't find what was wrong. And so I rebuilt my rig from scratch, thinking I just made a silly mistake during the first time, but it still didn't work. After rebuilding the rig three more times, remaking all the animations three more times, I finally figured out what the problem was and I still can't believe that what I was trying to do didn't work, so I still must be doing something wrong, but hey, it finally worked. The problem seemed to be my foot bone had some initial rotation which didn't really play well with my IK rig. To fix it, I simply removed this rotation and now Bob is my uncle. After remaking and tweaking all the animations with the new rig, I finally could start working on something else and I decided to start and flush out the main game loop of Junk World. I really want Junk World to be an action platformer with cool and dynamic combat and so I decided to start working on that. When I started working on the very first prototype, I had already made a very simple form of combat and the mechanics of dealing damage and taking hits were already implemented. But to be honest, it looked rather... janky. 
I really like those three combo systems where you would do an attack, hit the attack button again, do a follow-up attack, hit the attack button again, and then do some big kind of finishing move. So I opened up Blender, started animating with my new cool rig, and this is what I came up with. Yeah, I actually made a few animations, fully implemented the whole combo system, and hated everything about it. Game development really is an iterative process. You prototype or make something, then you test it, and you go back and change what needs to be changed to make the system better. And sometimes that means completely deleting something you have been working on for the past three nights. And I am fully okay with that. That's game development. That's why we prototype and test things out, so we can be flexible like this. I also see an experience like this not as a waste. It's a lesson learned. Because even though I deleted and threw out everything I made, it still helped me to figure out how to do it better. At this point though, I really needed a break. I experimented with some weird physics-based building prototypes to try and circumvent combat as a whole, which in the end is just not the direction I want to take the game in. And doing this just made me realize more and more I really want and need combat. I needed to get this right. I wanted to get this right. And so I do what I always do when I get stuck on something. I played some games. I played a ton of games focused on melee combat, and I really tried to dissect in great detail how the combat worked, how the animations looked, how input felt, and finally I could see how I wanted combat to work in Junk World. And so, I pushed aside any insecurities I had. I opened up Blender again, remade all the animations again, remade all my code, but much, much better this time around. And I did. I am absolutely thrilled with how it all came together. And like everything up to this point, it's not perfect, it has some minor bugs in it, but man, I love slashing things. But before I run you through the combat system thus far and we look at some tricks I did to make it all work, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel as it really helps us out and make Junk World the best game possible. Since I found always walking with Ren short caused some issues, I opted to make the sword sheathed when Carly is not attacking. I basically have one sword in the stored away position and one always attached to the hand and simply toggle them on or off whenever you start an attack. I then gave the sword this double trail renderer making for this neat slash effect. It still has some glitches now and again, but it will do for now. Finally, I made true on my word and got a three hit combo working. When you press the attack button once, you do a basic attack for one hit at a small range. And when you press the attack button again before the previous attack finishes, you make a follow-up attack with a slightly larger range. Then when you hit the attack button again before the follow-up attack ends, you do this cool spin move for double damage and at a range all around you instead of just a point in front of you. Now, a good action platformer wouldn't be complete without a good jump attack, would it? This is where the state machine approach really shined. Instead of having one super cluttered class checking if you're jumping or not, I simply made a new state for specifically the air attack, and the player can only transition to this state if she is jumping. To make sure the air attack always looks good, it basically consists of three phases. First, the spin, which is purely for the looks, then the smash, and finally the impact, which is the part that actually deals the damage. Doing it like this, make sure that no matter how high Carly is in the air, she always falls right up to the ground until the attack finishes. And believe it or not, I made all of this in one night. I had spent days before making work which amounted to nothing and I just ended up deleting, but now I was feeling inspired and I was on a roll. And so when I was playing Kirby the next morning, I noticed Kirby had a charge attack and I started wondering. Adding the charge attack was as simple as adding the other attacks, and yes, I know, I know, it's very inspired by Kirby's charge attack. I actually made it two stage where if you would charge the attack once, you get a high range double damage attack, and if you would charge extra long, you get a giant range triple attack damage attack. 
triple attack damage attack. As a trick to make this final attack look much more impressive and signal the larger range, I simply scale the wrench sword to be longer so the trail effect looks bigger. And that's it. We now have combat. And now we only need something to kill. I know, not ducks. If you made it this far into the video, don't forget to hit that like button and triple jump on that subscribe button as it really helps the channel out. And if you like to chat after hours, consider joining our Discord. There's a link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.